looking at my breakfast over there. Huh? What are you looking at? That's my coffee cup over there. Good morning, everybody. Say good morning. Come on. Uh-oh. What happened? Uh, Nobody's greeting good back. Morning. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Ava, say good morning, Ava. Hey, Ava is distracted with, with my coffee cup. Good morning. It's April 1st. April Fool's Day, but we're not fooling around here, okay? This is serious stuff. <laughs> I know. Okay. Well, it's the first day of April already, 2019, and Ava is soon gonna be five months old. Okay. So we're gonna comment on today's gospel, which is from St. John. Okay, chapter 4, verses 43 to 54. So in the gospel today, our Lord talks about performing a miracle for the son of uh, an official, a royal official. Okay, and he performs um, this, uh, this uh, miracle in Cana of Galilee. What's so special about Cana? What do we remember about the place called Cana? What is that? When, huh? when the water was changed into the wine. Yes, when Jesus performed his... Uh, how many miracles was that already? When he changed water into wine. That was the, the first miracle. Yes, the first miracle. And, uh, and it was through the insistence of Our Lady, right? When Our Lady said, they have no more wine. And Jesus said, well, you know, my time's not yet up. It's not yet time for me to be doing miracles. But anyway, because of you, because you, uh oh, God bless you. Because you are my mother and you're the one who asks me, then okay, I'm going to perform the miracle. So Jesus changed water into wine. Now, he was returning to Cana in Galilee when an official met him. <clears throat> Actually, uh, went out of his way in order to meet Jesus and ask Jesus for a big favor because Jesus um, was heard to have been performing miracles so this uh, official sought out Jesus and asked him well can you please come because my son is very sick and he's dying so I need a very very big favor from you I need a big favor from you and can you please come and cure him because nobody else can cure him and, well, Jesus says, well, you know, you guys, you always like a sign before you can believe in, in God. Hmm? You always want signs. Then uh, he says, well, you know what? Okay, go. You may go. Your son will live. And the official, in complete trust and confidence and faith in Jesus, he just goes. He obeys. Goes home and finds his son all cured and uh, better. Okay, what lessons can we draw from this particular gospel story today? It seems like a very nondescript kind of gospel story, right? Where our Lord just does another miracle. Another miracle. And, and our Lord reprimands people for their lack of faith, that they need signs, that they need miracles to believe. Right? But our Lord has also said that, well, uh, um, lucky are you if you believe without needing any uh, science or any proof, right? Because there are many other people there who, who cannot believe. It says you're, you're more blessed uh, because you believe without having to see things, okay? Because that's what faith is all about, right? Now, but there's one other lesson here which I think is very important. And that is that Jesus can cure everything. See? God is more powerful than anything that might bedevil us. God is more powerful than all of our miseries, than all of our shortcomings, than all of our sins. Okay? God is more powerful than all of that. And, and just like this official who had every influence and power and maybe material wealth that he could buster to put together in order to get the best doctors to cure his son. Yet, he sought Jesus' help. 
what does that teach us? What does that teach us? I think what that teaches us is that we have to have plenty of humility. Every time we petition our Lord to help us overcome our shortcomings, our defects, our, our sins, and our bad tendencies, we need to ask Jesus with humility, with humility to pray for help, to pray for God's help with plenty of humility. Humility is a very important disposition that we should have in prayer. Because humility shows our confidence in God. Humility shows that we are not relying on ourselves own strength alone. Okay? Because we cannot overcome everything using our own strength alone. We need the grace of God to be able to overcome our defects, to be able to uh, uh, overcome sin and overcome our tendencies to do bad things. We need the grace of God all the time. We need that. And that is why we need humility. Number one, we need humility in order to recognize our defects. Because if we are proud, we are blind to the truth about ourselves. Okay? So just like this official here in, in the gospel, well, it took a lot of humility for him to recognize and realize that with all of his wealth and influence, he could not do anything about his son, that he needed God's intervention. To cure his son. Now, we should have the same disposition before God. We have to be humble. And in, in that humility, we will recognize our defects. We will understand our shortcomings. We will understand where we need help. And therefore, we can go to our Lord in complete submission. In humility, asking him for his help. So this time of Lent, this time of Lent is a very, very good time for us to be humble, to practice this virtue of humility, to really do uh, uh, some introspection and understand ourselves, understand our shortcomings, understand our defects, and understand where we might need help to improve in our lives, in our spiritual lives particularly. And then, and then with plenty of humility, pray. And ask our Lord for the help we need to overcome. And we will overcome. And God is going to help. But we need to be humble. We need to pray. We need to ask. And we need to do our part. We need to do our part. Which is? Which is? What is our part? Obey. Well, okay. Obey and to put the effort we need to put the effort because God is not just going to do miracles for us without us putting the effort. Okay? Like this official, he put the effort to go and ask our Lord. He traveled a long distance okay? uh, from Capernaum all the way to Cana. So he put the effort to try to beg God for some relief for his son. We have to do the same. We cannot just keep praying and praying and praying without us putting the effort to improve ourselves. Okay? Because God helps who? Those who help themselves. Okay, that's it for us, everybody. Say goodbye, Ava. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody. And be careful. Plenty of people are out there to prank you. It's April Fool's. Bye.